Hi, I'm Vincent Ferrey. I'm the Urban Forest Manager for Arlington County. Uh, today we're going to be talking about trees in urban settings. So we're here at Longbridge Park on a beautiful day. We're going to talk a lot about stormwater, a little bit how trees provide wildlife benefit even in urban environments, and uh, how street trees get supported by soil and how these trees add to the general aesthetic but also economic and environmental benefit of uh, National Landing, also known as Crystal City in uh, South Arlington. We're standing right next to the stormwater pond over here and this area collects all the stormwater from or most of the stormwater from this park and filters it so it reduces water pollution and reduces flooding in the rest of the community. Um, trees play a really big part in a large stormwater pond like this and you can see some smaller trees in here, some service berries, some sumacs and they help evaporate the water when it comes into the stormwater pond to, uh, to reduce the flood load on the rest of the community. We're looking really closely at how much trees can reduce stormwater in the county with bigger storms and bigger rainstorms and uh, hoping to get trees integrated more and more into our green infrastructure that way. This is a great example of how we are starting to do this and these trees have been in for a while now and they're doing their job and uh, keeping the stormwater uh, clean in this, in this particular park. Trees in urban environments uh, deal with a lot of stressors and here's a good example of a redbud on our promenade at Long Longbridge Park. There is so much wind through here uh, and these, these trees just constantly have to deal with wind, really exposed sun heavy spaces and these red buds are hanging on well but we started out with some uh, Japanese cherries and unfortunately they just did not do very well here. So tree selection is really important in urban environments. You got to worry about what the sun exposure is. Sometimes it's too much, sometimes it's not enough. Um, and you got to worry about wind, uh, dog uh, impacts, um, and just human impacts too. Runners coming in here, uh, compacting the soil. Um, these trees, these are native trees, these uh, red buds, and they provide a lot of wildlife value because, which is very important, we're right next to uh, this wildlife refuge roaches run over here and this is a major flyway for migratory birds so providing all the habitat they can uh, use to stop over they don't always breed in these places but it's good for them to take a break and just have a have a rest along the way so Arlington County's trees can be a little bit of a highway motel for them and uh, uh, sometimes we do have breeding colonies of some birds in here and there's quite a few uh, water birds that live in Roaches Run over here. So it's really great to have this kind of uh, little uh, natural space in the middle of Crystal City, right next to the railroad even, and uh, to, uh, to just appreciate nature. And uh, really, you can do quite a bit of bird watching here and find some really cool species. Street trees provide an extremely important component of our urban forest. These London plane trees over here along Longbridge Park provide shade for the sidewalk, shade for me standing right here right now. They filter pollutants, they filter stormwater, and they just provide a real nice aesthetic edge to the park over here. These trees uh, per, uh, face a lot of urban pollution and they face a lot of uh, impact from car pollution, from dogs once again, and uh, have to be very hardy and live in suboptimal soils. This particular tree has quite a bit of soil to work with, luckily, so it'll probably thrive in the long term. Uh, this uh, species is very well known for being a very urban tolerant species. The London plane tree is used across the world. In fact, I've actually seen it planted anywhere from Cambodia to Britain to here. So it's a really fascinating species that can handle a lot of uh, abuse basically 
and still provide us with all these great benefits. You can see a bus shelter back here, which obviously our public transit is very important to us, but sometimes there are conflicts between tree branches and buses and, and the shelter itself. We have to keep that in mind when we, when we plan for these trees. Sometimes we'll move, we'll even move the shelter if the tree is more important um, to, uh, to accommodate these conflicts. I was talking about street trees along Longbridge Park earlier, and here is an example of some newer street trees in Potomac Yard. Um, and these are some red maples, and you can actually see an example of some of the stress that trees in the streetscape endure. This second tree not looking too hot. It's still alive. I bent the twigs earlier. There's still some good life in it. So hopefully it'll pick up again in the spring. These were only planted a couple of months ago. Sometimes they get transplant shock or they're just not used to their new environment. One thing that's really interesting, and you can really see in this situation, is how we connect soil volume underneath sidewalks. So trees need a lot more soil than these small little tree pits. So these are maybe four by 12, five by 12 tree pits, but there is um, soil underneath these sidewalks that's uncompacted. And you can see in this pattern along here where the uncompacted soil is except for where it supports this light pole, there is healthy soil underneath these sidewalks providing root space for these trees. Not only does that benefit the trees, it also benefits the sidewalk. You've probably seen sidewalks have been kicked up by roots and other, and, and just the tree trunk itself. In this situation, what our hope is, is that the tree roots will go underneath this uncompacted soil space and uh, take advantage of that which will get us a healthy tree and hopefully also in the long term healthy streetscape so people can enjoy both of them. Here you can see some of the trees that were also planted about maybe uh, six or seven years ago, already really providing quite a bit of shade uh, in the streetscape. These are not the same species as what I showed earlier. These are willow oaks, extremely urban hardy species. Uh, but also they, they also have the soil volume underneath the sidewalk and they're clearly making use of it. They're almost 10 inches in diameter, um, which is kind of where they start providing the real environmental benefits. But they've already started providing some of this great shade and tree canopy along this area. Arlington County recently joined the Biophilic Cities Network. And you can really see some of the impact of this. This project kind of changed their design later on in the process and started integrating biophilic components. What does that really mean? Is integrating natural components, not just plants and, uh, and, and, and soil, but also uh, integrating the natural form into the space. You can see some of these trees, they're not necessarily supporting this whole building, but it is kind of an interesting way of integrating natural shapes into this space. You can also still see plenty of the plants and trees around here in this plaza. And it's a really good example of uh, integrating natural forms and natural shapes into a uh, building environment. You can also see those green walls in this plaza. They're over there and they're, they're behind us, um, providing uh, more color, more aesthetic benefit sometimes also providing a little bit of stormwater benefit. It's largely for just beauty and aesthetics, but it really integrates nature in our, into our built, built environment. Some of these spaces also have public spaces as part of their site plan as, uh, and we work to integrate public space into private development. You can see this park space uh, in Potomac Yard has quite a few trees lining it ready to provide shade to this uh, nice little uh, park space in the middle. Uh, accessible to the public and a really great benefit to our tree canopy. This was basically just an open field before with not much from a natural resource perspective. So in this case, it was actually not much of a loss and much of a gain, both from a, just a housing perspective, but then also from a natural resource perspective. 
These trees hopefully will grow up as much as the park side that I'll show you in a second and uh, provide the ecosystem benefits and the aesthetic benefits that we're looking for. Here's a good example of what that park will look like in the long term. So these are the same species, actually, another London plane tree similar to what we saw in the streetscape at Longbridge. And uh, already providing shade, this are, these were probably planted six or seven years ago and uh, really providing some fantastic shade and tree canopy cover for this park. A great example of a little bit more of a passive space. People tend to just enjoy themselves, maybe uh, sunbathe or walk their dogs in these areas and uh, just uh, provides a great respite from the urban environment. Here's a great example of a urban plaza, similar to the other one, but a little bit older design, a little bit more regimented, a little bit more uh, 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 sharp uh, features, um, uh, but still quite a bit of what I would call biophilic design as well. Lots of plants, lots of trees, uh, lots of uh, um, good landscaping kind of integrated with each other. These large crepe myrtles actually provide quite a bit of shade. People don't really think of them as a shade tree, but they're doing quite a bit for this space. Uh, I'm sure the uh, residents appreciate this space when they look out of their window. Um, so this, uh, they're just different approaches to biophilic design and private plazas. Um, you can still access this plaza, but it's, it's technically part of this private development. So we can look to some of this private development to provide the tree canopy that we're looking for in Arlington County as well. Um, of course, you see the, the sign of no dog walking over here. Dogs are unfortunately a little bit of a high pressure to uh, our urban tree canopy. They uh, just dog urine and dog waste uh, can cause a lot of damage to the soils and to the roots of trees. So we have to be careful and try to provide the right spaces. So dog parks and other spaces. To, uh, to reduce the impact on our natural resources. But with good design and, and a good space and providing natural spaces for people and dogs, um, we can get some fantastic spaces out of this. Um, this is the, uh, the end of our uh, little urban tree tour, but always feel free to uh, reach out to me at urbanforestry at arlingtonva.us or give me a call at 703-228-1863. Thanks. Thank you.